each individual is unique, so unique that you have to discover yourself, this uniqueness, all alone. There is no one like you, and no one can ever be like you. The greatest courage in life is needed when you go inward for many reasons. The first reason is, it is a flight from the alone to the alone. It is going deeper into your aloneness. You are now going deeper and deeper into your aloneness. And man is caught up in such a way that he becomes accustomed to company, to people and to family. When it comes to being alone, it sends quivers. He forgets absolutely the joy of being alone. Hence there is a fear of being left alone. We are always afraid of being alone, so we want the company of this or that. If the living company is not available, then we go to the company of the televisions, telephones. Through those we try to create a company. Because of this reason that man cannot be alone, there are societies, there are nations, because nation exists only because of fear not because of any love. That is why religion too exist. Indeed, not because of the longing for God. How many people really long for God who go to, who follow these religions, who go to their religious places? Not so many Christians, not so many Hindus, and not so many Mohammedans are really interested in God. They talk about God but they are not interested in God. They are all crowds. The whole world is religious in that way, but people are afraid of being left alone. They have to be a part of the same crowd. They have to be a part of some kind of crowd, whether it is a social crowd, whether it is a religious crowd, a political crowd or religious crowd. In fact, any crowd will do, but they are dependent on the crowd. They feel good when they are surrounded by people. They start feeling shaky and scared when they find there is nobody and they are all alone. It is a great blessing to be alone and spend some time in aloneness every day. That is the fear that grips you when you are lost in a, in a jungle or in a desert where as far as you can see there is nobody. That utter aloneness creates great fear because we are conditioned by the crowd, for the crowd, as part of the crowd. We live by the crowd, for the crowd and with the crowd. We are not brought up as individuals. We are all brought up as small units of a great mechanism called society, the nation and the churches. People are not satisfied with these crowds. Therefore, they create their own small crowds. There are so many subgroups in each religion. One particular group is not satisfied with this main group, so he forms his own group. That's how so many subsections in Hinduism, Islam, Christianity have emerged. People are not satisfied with these crowds, therefore they create their own small crowds. Because when the crowd is very big, you start losing yourself in the crowd. It becomes impossible for you to recognize people and to be recognized, to see who is who. This is the reason people create small crowds of their own 
as Rotary Clubs, the Lions Club and so many other clubs and religious and social clubs. The different sections of these so-called outer religions are nothing else but clubs. These are just a small crowds where everybody knows everybody else, where everybody is acquainted with everybody else. The greatest fear arises when you move inward because it is possible to find because it is possible to find a man in the desert. It is possible to find somebody in the forest when you are lost, but you will not find anyone when you start going deeper within you. You will never find anybody deep within you because there is no space for anyone else. Just you and you are alone. I have heard once a hunter got lost in the forest, he tried for three days continuously, but he could not find any way to get out. He got deeper and deeper in the thicker parts of the forest. He became desperate and could not sleep. There was nothing to eat. After three days, he thought, this is death. Now I cannot even survive. He shouted and did everything on the third day evening. And then he suddenly saw a man coming. They both rejoiced. Both ran towards each other and hugged also. They were absolutely unacquainted. But what a joy to see another man. But soon they found out that their joy was wrong. Both were disillusioned as they were lost. Each was thinking now, I have found a person who will help me to get out. And both rejoiced for a moment. But the moment they explained to each other why they were rejoicing so much, both were shocked. They were still lost in the same way, but they were not in so much despair. At least they could share their misery. They could communicate, relate, talk to each other, converse and do something together. They were still lost in the same way, but somehow it felt different. That is how marriage came into existence. Two lost people for a moment enjoy the honeymoon thinking I have found the person whom I was seeking and each is thinking the same way. Soon they will be disillusioned. But still, even though they will be miserable, they will be miserable together. It is better. People think to be miserable together than to be miserable alone. In fact, in togetherness, misery is multiplied. But people love togetherness because we are brought up in that way. From the very first moment of birth, the child depends on the mother, father and the family for survival. Then his circle becomes bigger, but he always remains part of the same group of a different kind, different nature, but it is always collectivity. Meditation is the only phenomenon where there is no possibility of meeting anyone. But in meditation also people form the groups. But I have discontinued that possibility that people will form a social group. When you are in meditation with me, you are all alone. There is no meditation group. Meditation is the only phenomena where there is no possibility of meeting anyone. And meditation you have to go alone, totally alone. Hence, hence only very few courageous people can enter meditation. That is why so few people have ever entered and out of those, only so few people have become enlightened. 
Secondly, when you move inward, you move without any maps. There is no map. Even if you go to moon, you have a certain map, a certain route. There have been people before you, their footprints are there, and there are milestones everywhere. Even in the sea you are not totally lost. In the sky you are not totally lost. You can communicate with the people and give messages. Even from the moon you can remain in some kind of relationship. It may be just through radio waves, but you can remain connected. You can still hear the voices of the people and you can still see that others are there. You remain connected in one way or the other. But when you move in words, the people who have gone in cannot leave any footprints for anybody. It is impossible because everybody's inner territory is so different that Buddha's footprints cannot help you. And if you follow Buddha's footprints literally, you will never find yourself. You will be lost in the woods. Jesus map cannot help you and you cannot follow it literally. However, it can help in a very indirect way. It can make you aware of certain things inside, but in a very vague sense. It can give you the confidence, yes, there is a world inside, no doubt about it. Because so many people cannot be lying. Buddha reached, Jesus reached, Jarathrus reached, Laosi reached, Mahabir, Raman, Krishna, Muhammad, Krishnamurti, Lalaji, Osho. Such beautiful people cannot be lying. They all have reached within. They attain to their inner fruition. They never existed together. Instead, they lived in different ages, in different countries, yet they speak almost the same language, of the same bliss, of the same innerness, of the same joy, of the same blessedness. But you cannot follow it exactly, because Buddha's inner territory differs from that of Jesus or Jarathrus or Lao Tse. Each individual is so unique that you have to discover yourself all alone. Hence great courage is needed. This is the greatest adventure in life. And one who goes on this adventure is indeed blessed. And he will certainly attain to that inner harmony and blissfulness one day. The only courage is needed to begin the journey and to continue against all odds. People will tell you, why are you sitting down all by yourself alone? Let's have some company. But no, I am not interested in any company. As far as social life, that is my living is concerned, I have to communicate with the people. But as far as my inner life is concerned, I need not communicate with anyone. I don't want anyone, any company, anyone around. You come here for certain work, finish that and you go your way and I go my own way in my inner solitude. Remember each one of you is unique. You have to discover your innerness yourself and rejoice every moment of it. Then one day something explodes from within and you have a team.